Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If you are an EMT or a medic student and you aren't already subscribed to this channel, I definitely encourage you to hit that subscribe button because we do come out with different videos and EMS cardiology lessons every single week. And this week we're going to be going over the anterior myocardial infarction. An anterior myocardial infarction is a type of heart attack that typically indicates an occlusion of the left anterior descending artery, or the LAD. This directly affects the blood flow and oxygen delivery to the anterior portion of the heart. This is definitely a type of heart attack that you will most likely run into at some point in your EMS career. So let's talk a little bit more about it. Before we get into the actual 12 lead characteristics, I just want to make it clear, it is very, very rare to see an isolated anterior myocardial infarction. Typically, it's an anterior septal or there's an anterior with lateral involvement, but the chances of you seeing an isolated anterior are pretty slim. ST elevation will be in our anterior leads, which are V3 and V4. So I did include ST depression being in 2, 3, and AVF, but I want to clarify it. So the reciprocal depression is really dependent upon what type of anterior MI you're having. So if you're having an acute isolated anterior MI, most likely you won't have any reciprocal depression, but I did include the ST depression in the inferior leads, and that is mainly when there is high lateral involvement. So if we have ST elevation in leads 1 and AVL, then most likely we can expect to see reciprocal depression in 2, 3, and AVF. Let's go over some of the causes and the risk factors of anterior MIs. Just like with any other STEMI, advanced age can be a cause. Smoking, hypertension, high cholesterol, being a male in general, arterial plaque buildup, a type A personality, which kind of goes hand in hand with stress, inactive lifestyles, family history, left ventricular hypertrophy, stimulants or drugs, and heart disease. Some of the signs and symptoms you could see with an anterior myocardial infarction is just your typical chest, abdominal, back, neck pain, a shortness of breath, pulmonary edema, pale and clammy skin, dizziness or syncope, fatigue, hypertension, and tachycardia. Going into some of the possible EMS treatments. First, I went ahead and put a 12 lead in here, and this 12 lead was made by 12leadtrainer.com. If you guys haven't checked out this website, I am not sponsored or anything, but you definitely have to check out this website. It's super awesome, especially if you are in medic school and you're learning 12 leads. So you'll notice in the 12 lead, it looks like there's ST elevation in leads three and four. It doesn't look like there's involvement in any of the other leads. Going into the possible EMS treatments of that, they would include getting a 12 lead, as we know, not every heart attack shows up on a 12 lead, so we have to treat our patient's complaint. So if our patient has chest pain that we believe could be of a cardiac origin, it's important that we follow our chest pain protocol. So get a 12 lead, obtain a set of vitals, get IV access, get a blood draw if your ambulance service or your department does that, give oxygen if needed, aspirin, nitro, fentanyl, and I do realize some services still give morphine. I definitely have seen a shift over the last few years from from giving morphine to cardiac related chest pain to really steering towards fentanyl, but just follow your protocol on that. And fluid is an option, but every patient is different, so you make that decision dependent on how your patient is presenting. Also, if your patient has complaints of nausea or other things that you can treat, make sure that you treat your patient. The monitor and vitals are definitely a consideration whenever you're treating your patient, but don't forget you have a live person there that can answer all your questions about how they're feeling you can take into consideration the bigger picture and treat your patient. Anyway, guys, I definitely want to go into detail in another video about the different variations of anterior myocardial infarctions. But that is all for acute isolated anterior MIs. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.